Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and welcome to Belize in Crisis from Sanctuary Radio. Today we have Kurt Bizarrego uh, who presented for Kayanart, Belize People's Front. He's an era rep representing the Belize People Front. Hey, hi, Kirk, how you doing? Hey, Sensor Man, good man, great. How about you? Good evening. So, what we got on the topic today? Well, I, we have quite a few little things on the topic today, Sensor Man. Um, where do we want to start? Let's start with the past uh, July, August transfer of voters registration. How do we describe that? We, I, I'm personally disappointed for one, but we know that this has been the, the political game of the PUP and UDP for so many past years. Um, I, I, like I have not been too up close and personal with politics before. I never did have a chance to see what exactly was going on. And I was amazed. I mean, uh, UDP was transferring voters from other areas, from all the way up in Orange Walk. Uh, they were bringing in voters to vote in Kayonat. And PUP was doing the same thing. They were bringing in voters from Orange Walk, from other constituencies who don't live in Kayonat, to vote in Kayonat. And um, it was sad to see because now we are having blatant corruption happening in our elections. Um, our party leader, Mrs. Nancy Marin, said a few weeks ago that she don't think that any election has been won fairly since the era of the Honorable George Cable Price. She thinks that all the rest of elections after Honorable George's time was bought. And I got to see it firsthand. I was um, I was actually approached by an ex-minister, no other. And the first thing he told me when he saw me videoing the people out at the election area was that won't help us videoing what's going on won't help us and he was laughing actually so i had a chance to talk to him afterwards um, and he told me straight he said by udp they do it and if we want to win the election we have to do it wow. so i told him i said but why didn't you guys stand up against it instead of joining it what uh, what does that say about your party you know to the lens that you are willing to go to to win an election mm -hmm. and we have to understand this is something that has been done by both major political parties in the past they abuse the people because uh people have come to us to me personally and said, sir, you know what, we, we realize that it's not the right thing to do, but we may need the money. So we do it. You know? It is. And that is the reality of the case. Our, our governments in the past have held down our people in poverty um, for, what, 30 odd years. So, so when election time comes, the... the they know what to do already. The, the politicians know what to do already. They know who can be bad. They know who to approach, you know. And I must say that if you check some of my videos that I took that day, a lot of them were Hispanic people. Yeah. Yeah. People that I have not even seen in the Cayo North <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever, you know. So I, my message to the, to the people who truly reside in Cayo North is... You need to come out. You need to come vote. You need to come make a difference because if we're going to allow people who don't live in our constituency 
to make a decision where our constituency is concerned, then we might as well just sit back and, and take the lick as they come. You know? So that was sad to see, Senator Man. There was no uh, proper investigation done by Elections and Boundaries. Um, the, 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 the both main political parties have been abusing the system for their own agenda. We know that. Mm -hmm. The Belizean people knows it. But where do we, when do we say enough is enough? Where do we put a stop to it? How do we put a stop to it? This has to come from the court system, the election and, and boundary system, and the police system. And the PUP and the UDP won't do it because that's their agenda. My thing is, does two wrong make a right? No. Does being corrupted stop corruption? No. Mm -hmm. So by joining what the UDP was doing, the PUP has shown their true color again. Again, and yet I see young Belizeans uh, who are helping to facilitate these movements slandering me because I am out there taking a, a video you know and, and my question was but why don't we stand up as Belize as Belizeans and fight the corruption why must we join the corruption in order to win an election no man come on if they had Belize's interest true at heart I think the PUP should have come out. I, 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 uh, I have to say, I think Mr. Lande Habet, the PUP standard bearer for, for Kion Ortiz, at least he came out and spoke about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I spoke to Lande because we've been friends from high school days. I tell Nancy, I tell, I tell uh, Lande, I said, Lande, I tell her, but how you the talk against this your party to do it? Okay? And the man just, he just laughed and shrugged his shoulders, you know. <laughs> and he said, Kurt, at least I know they do it. Right? I tell him, well, great. Good for you, you know. I actually tell him, I actually tell him, I can't join with. <laughs> he said, he said too late for that. Anyway, where do we stop the corruption? He said, so man, why, do, why does the people of Belize continue to support these people who we openly see are not afraid of doing corrupted things. One person told me corruption is a way of life in the business. Is it? Are you corrupted? Um, I'm not corrupted, but um, as I step through, as I step out my door, uh, and you talk. Let's about let's differentiate what corruption is. For me, for the meaning that I have for corruption, let me let me go into so I don't misquote. Mm -hmm. All right, it says dishonest mm -hmm. or fraudulent fraudulent conduct by those in power, typically involving bribery. Yeah. Now, I have been called corrupted because I owe money to people. Is that corrupted? That means that the, the whole world is corrupted because which honest businessman doesn't owe money? Even this honest businessman owes money. Is that being corrupted? No, that is the system that we have where certain small businesses mm -hmm. are not allowed to function to their capacity because of political victimization yeah. because of the system that we have in place okay mm -hmm. we have to we have to understand the quote that says educated people cannot be controlled because they're educated enough to know what is wrong and what is right okay so i don't consider myself corrupted for owing uh john a dollar or, or paul two dollars that's not corruption the definition of corruption was what i told you just now mm -hmm. okay so we have we have people defending 
defending, I mean, very abusive and, and, and arrogant in defending corruption, as it is here. Dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power, typically involving bribery. Okay? So let's, let's move away from that. We know the corruption is happening. The Belize People's Front primary mandate is to stop the corruption. How we go about stopping the corruption? How do we go about stopping it? We have to look at our constitution. We have to learn our constitution. We have to do what changes are necessary in the constitution for people who are in political offices or government offices. They don't find it so easy to be doing these blatant dealings when it comes to elections, when it comes to under the table deals, when it comes to the people's money being spent. Okay? So that's part of where we start is in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We have to change the system that Belize has been governed under for so many years. We voting ministers as representative of the different constituencies. Does that automatically make us viable or knowledgeable to run a government department? No, it doesn't. So the BPF wants to bring back in permanent secretaries. The CEOs that we have in the different government offices right now are all politically appointed. Yeah. And most of them don't even know what's going on in the ministry that they're, that they're overseeing. So we want to bring back in career public servants, permanent secretaries, who know how to run these, de these departments. Again, under the oversight, oversight, not intervention, under the oversight of the minister who is supposedly in charge of these different departments. We implement the laws. We separate the judicial system from the governmental system, which is going to be hard to do. We'll be... We will be bucking heads with people all along the line because a lot of people don't want to change the system. But again, we had this conversation on our last show that we need to change the judicial system. We need for the courts to stand on their own mm -hmm. and defend the constitution and laws of Belize. We need to bring in the United Nations or whatever other body people want to bring in that is that's standing against corruption to help to help Belize develop a board or an oversight committee so that investigations can happen not only of the present uh, uh, politicians but of the past and the future politicians we want to have a system in place where Mr. Joe can no longer make the decisions without fear of facing the penalty of the law. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the corruption has to stop. We have brilliant minds in Belize. We don't know, we don't have all the answers. I am not a liar. So I can't tell you how to change the, the, the constitution. But we have a lot of uh, brilliant minds in Belize. We have a lot of brilliant liars in Belize. We must understand that most of them have either, have either been supporting the UDP or the PUP before. Yeah. But the corruption has to stop. I think everybody agrees to that, that the corruption has to stop. So that is the primary mandate of the Belize People's Front, is to put a stop to the corruption. So I cannot now expect to get into politics thinking that I'm going to get rich of politics. That is not our mentality. That is not what we're here for. Everybody say, but money could buy anything. My answer to that is that money cannot buy my integrity. I think my party stands up for the same principles and morals that money cannot buy us. 
Okay, molecular of a bi-week, we won't even interfere in you know, the status quo. All right? So there are people in Belize who are still honest. They were afraid of, victim, uh, of political victimization, which has been known mm -hmm. to happen under PUP and UDP. So people are afraid to come forward and speak their mind. What makes us different? I personally have no fear of politicians. They, they have not given me anything. They have not put me in any way. I have not asked any politi politicians for assistance in my business or in, or in uh, getting my money for my family or whatever. So one, I am not afraid of political victimization. Two, I am a diehard Belizean-born patriotic Belizean. That is how I consider myself. And I have gotten enough of what has been happening in our country for so long mm -hmm. that I decided to take a hand in trying to make a change. I'm being attacked because of it. My character is being questioned. I have been slandered. That's all right. In my heart, I know the person I am and the reason that I'm doing this. People who really know me know the person I am, and know what I stand for. So we have to now make a stand against the status quo. We have to make a stand against corruption. But by stopping the corruption rebuilds our economy. Does it create jobs for our citizens? Does it give us a better quality of education? Does it give us better health care? Does it give the young people better sporting in initiatives or incentives? Actually, it does. Stopping corruption leads to all these things being improved. With the proper schemes and, and policies in place, stopping corruption can then develop our nation the way how it is supposed to be developed. We wish we had the support of the United Nations and the international bodies in the sense of having our government main political party. I know the BPF has asked for it, or is in communication with, with, uh, with uh, the United Nations for their support in coming down to monitor our general elections, to come down and, 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 and take footage of what a Belizean election is all about, the way how it is facilitated by politicians, the way how it is run by politicians, the, 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 the payouts that happen on election day. Mm -hmm. okay. So we are negotiating with the United Nations as an alternative party to come in and assist in monitoring these types of things. Like I say, we are in negotiations with them. We don't know if it's going to come true. It all depends on, 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 on their... Uh, I, don't, I don't think the government is going to allow it, for one. But at least we're making that step in reaching out to the international community for them to come in and see what Belizean elections are all about. Okay? So stopping the corruption, we can then bring in industries to Belize, something that has not been done for the past 20 odd years. If you notice, Belize still has the same grassroots industries that we've had for the past at least 20 years. We have about three industries. I'll only name one. Um, we have a cereal manufacturing company who wants to come into Belize. And now listen to this. This is something that Belize cannot afford to lose or to bypass. It's a cereal manufacturing company who wants to come in and build a facility, put
put in the machineries and train the Belizean people how to run this industry. They will do all the investment. It's a loan. It's not the company will be for Belize, for Belizeans. We have to understand that. It's a loan that they're giving us, but they're willing to come in and do all the work to set up and have the Belizeans start to run this industry. Okay? It creates jobs for Belize in the managerial, the staff, and the labor force. That is one, and we have three so far. Why hasn't these things been implemented before? If we look at, at investments that have been made into Belize, all the foreign investment has been done by foreigners solely. We want to implement that if any foreign investor wants to come invest in Belize, they have to have a Belizean partner, a Belizean national who lives and resides in Belize as their partner on a 50-50 share, 50%. Okay, so we know at least 50% of that investment is staying in Belize. It's initiatives that we want to give to investors to come in. We have to watch our import duties on a lot of stuff. We have to make sure that whatever we take away from imports, that we're not losing the revenue on other places. So we have a lot of zero-rated stuff that are not made in Belize. They're reported in. Okay? And we're not getting the import duty we're supposed to be getting from stuff imported into Belize because of them being zero rated. We need to develop more industries to start making some of these products in Belize, to start our agriculture department, empower the agriculture department more so that Belize becomes a self-sustaining nation with the opportunity to, to export by creating small industries in the agro-processing section. It's not been done for the past 20 odd years. By giving the foreign investors the incentive to come in, we have to give them a little bit of protection for their investment into Belize. That's understood. It's been done with all the foreign investors that has come into Belize before. Mm -hmm. But do we give them security for 25 years? No, man. These are things that have to be renegotiated and bring in policies that will benefit the Belizean people. Again, I am not an economic uh, genius or anything like that but these are things that the common people can see and I'm a common person okay I consider myself a common Belizean all right but these are things that we can see you we hear it discussed all the time we have brilliant economic minds the Belize Chamber of Commerce has got brilliant minds working for them okay they need to be involved more in some of these business decision making. They need to be involved more in the economic planning of Belize. So we've gone through corruption. We've gone through in starting to rebuild the economy. Mm -hmm. And we've touched a little bit on tax reform. Okay? The items we produce in Belize we need to have put heavier taxes on those items being brought into Belize to slow down the importation of goods that are produced in Belize. Control of prices. If we notice through this pandemic and hurricane season that was coming here, prices have gone up, gone up to the to the public in the in the grocery stores. Yeah. And I know a lot of Belizeans have noticed it. Okay? There is no proper price control in place. Nothing, nothing. To stop, to stop this, okay. Nothing so we have, so we have to go now to the Bureau of Standards and have them implement their laws in price control. All right. So we go back to the zero-rated 
stuff coming into Belize. If we take away from Tam two dollars, we have to get it back somewhere. All right. So we mentioned if we're applying zero rated to stuff that we need in Belize that is not produced in Belize, then we need to up the duty on stuff that is made in Belize that is imported into Belize. So we balance off the zero rated to the taxation of goods that Belize is produced. I think that could help solve the dilemma our farmers have in selling their produce. Again, when it comes to our culture, we have to deal with the, all the farmers. We have to implement associations that is run by the farmers. Government has to get in and put a hand in the farming industry. We have to start with, like I said, the agro-processing plants to help create jobs for the Belizean people. We cannot now solely depend on tourism. So we have to look more into initiatives to bring jobs to the people and stimulate the economy locally. We can uh, depend only on international help all the time. Okay. We have a we are a part of CARICOM and we are a part of Central America. We are the only country that has this this benefit. Yet there are certain things that are that is not being done tying into the CARICOM market. We know for a fact that there is countries in the CARICOM asking Belize for simple things that we throw away here, like uh, cashew, mm -hmm. peanuts, yeah. okay, um, mango. We have we have companies in in Caribbean con countries who are asking for uh, mango sauce. So why why haven't we been looking into these markets? from long ago. We have to tap into CARICOM. This helps to bring in foreign exchange. It helps to create jobs in Belize because now we have mango pickers, which we never had before. We have cashew pickers, which really do it for the local consumption. And it's so expensive that most people, you know, not really make one living off of it. Um, and peanuts, we have we farmers at San Antonio and, and, and different Mayan communities where we plant a lot of peanuts. They have the, the potential, they have the know-how. So why aren't we, you know, pushing some of these um, fruits and, and stuff out, or nuts and, and stuff out to the, to the Caricom community? Belize have 300, 400,000 people. How much does the Caricom have? So there are things that can be done. Alice is, is trying to say there are things that can be done by people who can see the future in a better way, who have a little bit more initiative in getting the things done, who really wants to see Belizeans benefit on a whole. Okay? Because if we create job employment, then nobody will need a handout from any government official, from any politician. They will be making their own money. That's correct. So they will be able to make their own decisions as to who they support come an election time. Okay? So we have to stop the corruption. We have to create jobs. All right? Health. Health is another very important issue. You will see it on the Facebook especially because that is a, that is a form of, of uh, publicity right now that we can't be doing the close contact with people. Yeah. You see all the comments about our healthcare system. Now, POP bring out one brilliant, brilliant 
advertisement about our healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Yet, none of it was implemented between 2000 and 2008. UDP has not, in any form that we can see, upgraded the healthcare situation in Belize. Not, nothing whatsoever. Nothing. Okay. So, all these pretty advertisements and all these false promises, where has it gotten us in the last 20 years? We owe $3 billion now. Okay, from one billion, we got to three billion. All right, and out of that three billion dollars that we now owe, what have we really got to show for it? Nothing. Those cement streets and roundabouts. But <laughs> where, where, where is that helping us? There's only one person getting the contracts to build the roads, so he has one set of workers. Um, the construction industry in Belize has, has basically been invaded by foreigners. Yes, that's so true. what happened to our Belizean contractors? Okay. We have been begging for a contractor association for over 20 years. And neither PUP or UDP has, benefited, has seen it fit to give us. Because All right. it benefits them. It, it benefits them because they can then give their cronies the, the overbloated contracts. And they get their kickbacks. We all know that. Okay? Even the contractors, they admit it. All right? That they have to charge $2 million a mile now for highway instead of $1 million because they have to give kickbacks to the ministers. No, no, only that, but... Um, okay. You remember that... that you remember that case with... Um, with um, Boots Martinez. You know the story. When he made that guy a contractor, right? He made that yeah. contract that guy said he couldn't even nail a nail in a board. But because <laughs> he signed the contract papers, the Prime Minister said, yeah, you are a contractor, man. And that is buying and that is legal. <laughs> well, the one with the Bill Highway is never known for Bill Highway neither. <laughs> but he is now the main highway bill line Belize. Yeah, he is. He is. Okay. So I remember when old Cisco used to do highways. They're still there. Most of Cisco highways are still there. Still there in tuck. All right. Some of the ones that this one built now after two years, we have to go back and repair, which is costing the taxpayers more money now. All right. I so I think Belize needs Belize need better roads. We need we need a highway, a real highway, not a fake highway. We need a real highway. Sentiment, as long as we have. Politicians getting kickbacks. I don't see Belize getting any better in in any form. Not in their healthcare system, not in the education system, not in the in infrastructure of Belize, uh, and definitely not in the sports for the youths. So until we change that mentality, until we change that system, how much better do we have to get? Do we keep on? How how much can we continue to borrow from the international community? When when will the international community say, you know what, we have lent you so much, but we not see the, the, the value for money, so we can't lend you no more because you know they pay back. So we are borrowing to repay and borrowing to repay, and we are getting deeper and deeper into the hole. That is not sound economics. I know it. I have failed at a couple of businesses. So I, I, I have that experience in knowing how to fail. You can't spend more than what you make. I, I think you, you hear this in the Senate meetings all the time. Yeah. Okay? I know my brothers have thrown it at me all the time. That I can't live beyond my means. That I can't spend what I don't make yet. <laughs> all right? And, and I thank them for that because they have taught me how to be more careful in money that you make. So now tourism has gone. We have very little exports. We don't have nobody, not in this government at least, who have been there to implement feasible plans in going ahead with our country. And I don't see it from the PUP either. Okay? That's why I joined the Belize People Front, you know, because Mrs. 
Marie showed me a plan that that seems like a solid plan for Belize. Yet most people are not giving giving the, the BPF a chance to get into elections. Why? Because of the status quo. This is how the status quo keeps the, the status quo. Right? Mm -hmm. They will they will tell the people that no third party can help on. Only we can help on. Alright? What the people don't realize is that the changes a third party will bring about to stop the status quo would benefit the whole country of Belize and all Belizeans. Okay? Not just a selected few, but all Belizeans. If you could make the people make their own money now, where they don't have to look for handouts. No politician I can't control them people, you know. No politician I can't go there and say, Pass and give only fifty dollars, man. Transfer your vote for me. And by election day, no worry. I got you. I got you back for an next seventy-five dollars. Mm -hmm. How long does one hundred and twenty-five dollars last you? By the time you don't transfer your vote, you get fifty dollars. What? If it lasts you one week, all right? You want to eat beans every day, all day. Yeah. How long seventy-five dollars more will last you? Election day, huh? That's true. We have to wake up as one people and realize that we the condone the corruption in our system. We the facilitate the corruption. Okay? And until our people understand that and still where it doesn't benefit them, it doesn't benefit the country, it doesn't definitely doesn't benefit the future generations. Your kids, my kids, my grandkids, your grandkids, okay? It definitely doesn't benefit the future generations until our people can acknowledge that they are the ones condoning the corruption, that they themselves have themselves in that position where they have to look out to that $50 from a politician, okay? That is where we start to stop the corruption. You know, it's so pathetic because... Um the present government promised the um, unemployed Belizeans, they promised them $150 every two weeks. Okay? This is the second dis disbursement, disbursement of money. Um, Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Has the ministers uh, gotten a pay cut in our, through this COVID thing? Not that I know of. Not that I know of either. That All right. When it when it when it first started, the only one who came out and said, "Well, I won't accept any more salaries," is the prime minister, and that his ministers would accept one month without salary. <laughs> they don't need it, boss. The amount of money they make, they don't need that. You see any minister? They go out there right now. They help the people, and we don't have food. And now there's over eight about eighty thousand Belizean, eighty thousand Belizean right now are in need. Are in need. And uh, they, they, this government promised them, promised them $150 every two weeks, and nothing have materialized. And it's not eighty, it's not eighty thousand Belizeans, you know, sense man. It's eighty thousand people who are asking for their families. Yeah. Plus, yeah. You understand me? Because you have a lot of people now coming out openly and asking for help because they can't handle the situation no more. Government not the help then. And have, they're not. Nothing, they're not to make more money. Nothing have materialized. Nothing. Not even, but not even send out, send out, send out a letter and say, okay, you're not approved because of this. Nothing. You send out. They send application in, and they don't send answer man. you. They give you some bogus Ooh. number. They give you some bogus number down up there. You call, you can't call the number. You can't text the number. They give you some bogus Ooh. email. I don't know what. But going. we we have to realize. That we are at fault for that. We are the blame for that. Yeah. We the people are the ones who have condoned, encouraged, and facilitated. All that has been going on for the past 20 years. We have been blue to red to blue to red. Now they want to go back to blue again. What will change, Sensoman? 
Oh, but we learn no, we learn, we learn. But listen to me. From the mere fact that you are willing to facilitate the buying of votes and transfers, you will not have no corruption for stop. You will facilitate the corruption more. So not coming out with on a story about how Uno change and Uno this and Uno that. Okay? And at time for make the Belizean people and wake up now. Belize cannot handle it anymore. We are in a crisis. We are in a big, big crisis. And if we continue with the status quo, we don't have any better to get. Yeah. So make we continue, Sensor Man. Health care. Why is it that we have millions of dollars being spent in the healthcare system, but we don't see it? Why is it that the, the San Ignacio Hospital, the, the, the public hospital in San Ignacio, doesn't have any equipment? If somebody is in an, an emergency here, they have to be rushed to Loma Luz, or to Bamapan, or to Carl Hushna. Okay, we have to have these emergency systems set up in all our district hospitals. Okay, mm -hmm. our ambulance system is now in the hands of, of, of private people. The government has not invested in, in, in good ambulances, you know, okay. for how many years? So we, we haven't bought equipment, we haven't bought uh, uh, ambulances. All right. Another subject I need to touch in the healthcare system, and I reflect back from when my first child was born. She was born in the old Belize City Hospital, okay? And she was delivered by a Cuban doctor, of all people, who was a very nice and knowledgeable guy. So kudos to him. My daughter was diagnosed as having asthma mm -hmm. as a baby by two doctors in Belize. Now, I got mad at one of them because I went to see him 9 o'clock in the morning at the hospital, at the public hospital. And this man will look at me and tell me, oh, I don't got time for dealing with you right now. Come check me out at my private clinic this evening. Hmm. You don't know $40, $50 done right there. Is that fair to the poor people who can't afford $40, $50 for going to a private clinic? Hmm. So, anyway... I, I decided, you know what, I, want a, I wasn't satisfied, I wanted a different opinion. Me and my wife took my, my daughter to Chetomal, of all places, and she was diagnosed by a doctor there, in a small little office, no fancy office or nothing, in a small little office. And the doctor told me, he said, no, 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 he said, this is not asthma, he said, this is just a deep chest congestion. And if they had treated her for asthma, it would have turned into asthma. Okay? My point in all of this is that we do not have the proper system in place for our health. We do not have the proper systems in place at our hospitals. We have good nurses, you know. We have professional nurses. Most of the time, they well, have one doctor. All right? And this is something that they that the health association needs to look at, at the, at the doctor's association, they need to look at it, all right? Because if you are working for the public system, I don't think you should have a private clinic. I honestly don't. You're being paid by the public system to work in the public system. If after you've served X amount of years, we have replacements in there, then fine, you go out and do your private, your private clinic, but you no longer can work for the public health system, okay? Or not under the public system anyway. So we have to we have to revisit all of these things that have gone on in our country for so many years that affects the country and the people of Belize. Education. Thank God we now have a university of Belize, but how far can we get educated in the University of Belize? Can we get our masters or our doctorate here now? I don't think so. All right. We still have to go abroad to get a doctorate. Or maybe you can enlighten me a little bit more with that. Maybe you know more about the education system than me. All right? But as far as I know, I don't think we can get a doctorate here in Belize. 
So we need to upgrade the education system. We can't stay with the same old normal. We are now in modern times. All right, everything has advanced. Technology has advanced. We need to we need to get more into IT. We need to for, for develop more the education system. All right, so the BPS part in, in, in playing this with the education system is that we want to give primary school free education. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, but, um, before we, um, yeah, um, Kurt? I Tell want, me. I just want to play um, a commercial um, from you guys. Sure. Uh, I'll tell you when it's finished, and um, it's, this is... Amigo y amigo, sabes algo, las elecciones Vamos a votar, es tiempo de mejorar Vamos a progresar, vamos a prosperar Vamos a mejorar, el norte de Colosal Finally, an alternative. The police people's rights. We put the people. Look at the calendar. We have fast forwarded five years. Words like crime and corruption are no longer a part of your daily conversation and rarely on the news. You hear that in the last two years, we have generated thousands of jobs and that we have returned improved pensions to the elderly, that our children now enjoy health insurance and opportunities of scholarships. The BPF does not have all the answers. We offer you concrete plans, honesty, opportunity for your progress. We can tell you where we want to take this country and how much we can achieve together. We want to have our children from 6 to 20 years studying in schools and their parents with dignified, honest jobs before 2025. We want our people to finally feel secure and safe that no matter where you migrated from, you feel a part of a united Yay. nation with one vision, a vision of a much better quality of life, with opportunities of education, access to health care, opportunity to progress, better quality of life, with hopes of much yeah. more. It's this is why we ask only one thing of you. No, no, I was, I was just going to mention something to you about Ladies and gentlemen, back to that was just a brief commercial break with um the whole skirt lizard. Yeah, so so we were we were discussing about the health system that, that needs to be there's a lot of things there that needs to be revisited. And I'm sure some of the doctors are gonna vex with me, but uh, there's things that has to benefit the Belizean people and I think they need to be addressed. We have to realize that we are trying to stop this business as usual thing that has been going on for so long. Belize cannot afford to continue doing business as usual under the kind of system that it, it's been done. So we have to revisit the healthcare situation in Belize. We have to make sure that our healthcare facilities are modernized, that they're up to date in training, in facilities, in medicines, okay. Um, I, I always like go back to to, to certain things. Uh, when I was working at Renko Battery Factory in Belize City, right behind Renko, mm -hmm. 
lived the person who was then in charge of the of the uh, Belize City Hospital. And I used to watch boxes of stuff being delivered to their house. And I later found out that these people had a pharmacy, a private pharmacy. Hmm. So, uh, so a lot of things were being funneled, diverted, I should say, from the hospital into their own personal pockets. And uh, things like these, you know, we have to watch what has been going on. I understand that the the wife of the of the Minister of Health is now one of the biggest importers in, in medicines to Belize. Okay. So we have to we have to be very careful how we give out these licenses and, and everything has to be transparent. You know, we, we have to have bids come in for different types of services to government or to the public and, and we have to look for the better solutions. We can't just to continue with business as usual. So we do want to develop better health care for all our citizens, whether you're born Belizean or nationalized Belizeans or whatever. We want, I want to feel confident enough that if I drop down right now with a sickness that my family can take me to the public system hospital. You know, maybe they can't afford for care me to a private doctor or fly me out to Miami or fly me out to Mexico or, you know, I want to, I want the Belizean people to feel secure in the health system that they have. Education. We have to have to develop a better form of education for our kids. We, we yes, we know that our teachers need to be trained, but how far do they need to be trained? In what aspect do they need to be trained? So we need to develop a better educational system. Um, sports. We need to develop sports for our young people. Sports keeps a lot of people off the streets. It keeps a lot of people putting their energy to something worthwhile. I mean, look at how, how much money sport is in different countries, especially in the US. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, sports people in Belize who, if they're disciplined enough and they push themselves hard enough and they can stay off drugs or, or that type of, uh, that type of, um, Thing, the, the, the things that are out there for them, they can advance, but the government has to put in certain policies in sports, which allows our young people to be developed from a young age into the discipline of sports and into the knowledge of sports in all different kinds of sports. Okay? We just here, we have one Belizean and Spain. They, they train with one of the B teams in La Liga, okay? which is... I mean, the La Liga is one of the biggest leagues in soccer, in football, all right? I, I have a, a friend of mine in Houston whose son is playing American football for one of the professional teams, okay? Big up to these guys. I mean, these guys have had the discipline. Look at our friend uh, uh, Shane Orio, who used to go play, I think it was Costa Rica, all right? He's gone international. Okay, so so there's a lot of venues in sports for our young people, but we have to we have to have the facilities, we have to have the the uh, the incentives for our young people to get more involved, seriously involved in sports. All right. So these are a lot of the of the issues that we have. It's not all the issues that we have to 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 bring to the table, but it's some of the the more major issues that we have. All right. We actually have, uh, I, I just, uh, I, I wrote down something this morning and I have, we have a, a company in, we have a company in South Africa who is asking us for produce. All right. Um, you to hear me, Sensorman? Yeah. I was telling you that we have a company in South Africa who is asking us for produce. Okay. So there's a lot of potential to, to bring development to Belize, man. They just have to be done properly. 
All right. I don't know if, if you want me to touch on anything else, but those are the points that I want. Oh, we have a... <coughs> I'll just make a short comment on this because it seems to be doing the, the social media quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We just had a, a young lady vetted for as a standard bearer for Cayo Central. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of uh, things coming out now where she's there. People are saying that she's Guatemalan, that uh, uh, her appearance is Guatemalan, and that uh, uh, I don't know. Anyway, our, even our party has taken a lick for it because the people are saying if that is the type of people that we are we are having as our standard bearers, then they're losing faith in us. I just want to say this. We have a vetting committee that goes through whatever is presented to them. We as candidates have to show that we are Belizeans. Um, we have to show some of our history of what has gone on in our past before. And apparently this young lady, uh, they have photos of her attending a beauty pageant in, in Peten, Guatemala. And she has made a couple of TikTok videos that I think she's taken off her TikTok account now. But people apparently took uh, photos of these TikTok videos. And so a lot of people are talking negative about it. So we have found out that the young lady is a born Belizean as far as we know because of her birth paper presented to us is a genuine birth paper her Belizean passport states that she is Belizean born from the Stan Creek district but yet people still have this lot of negativity about her no? So we have to realize that, and I've told her this. She said, well, she never realized that politics is dirty. It is under the status quo. Because they're the ones who try to find whatever dirt they have on other people and bring it out to the public's view. And this is not done by, I'm not, I'm not pointing any fingers at any minister or anything like that. This is done by people who support their parties. Whether they are paid for, for it or not, I don't know. Okay? But what I can tell you is that our party has verified that this young lady is a Belizean born from Guatemalan parents. Does that make her a Guatemalan? I don't think so. Because she is Belizean born. So she is a Belizean. Everybody says, oh, but we have a conflict with Guatemala. So these people should not be even be given uh, a citizenship in Belize. It's true. Our constitution states that any person coming from a country that does not recognize Belize or has difficulty with Belize cannot be a Belizean citizen. So, to the people who are slandering this young lady because of some photos that she took with clothes on, by the way, she wasn't naked or anything, she had her clothes on, because of some photos that this young lady took before she even thought about getting into politics, because of her parents being born Guatemalans, and because of her attending a beauty pageant in, in Peten, does this not does this make her not worthy to run for a representative for a political party in Belize? I don't think so. I think that if she's a born Belizean, it doesn't matter where her parents come from. Most of us, our grandparents came from other countries. The only people who can rightfully say that their grandparents came from Belize was the Mayans. And even their ancestors came from Asia. Okay, so, so, and again, if her parents are Guatemalans residing in Belize legally, who 
gave them the papers to reside in Belize legally? Yeah. This has and is being done up to today by the status quo, by the PUP and by the UDP. So these people were fit enough to come in and vote for a certain political party. They were given their papers to vote for a certain political party. And yet you're telling me that their children born in Belize don't have the right to run in a political party? Don't have the right to be a Belizean? Come on, man. What kind of standard is that? Huh? I think they're doing, and, and, and this is coming back to me too, that, that they're, like I say, they're slandering us. Why? Because people are being paid by the parties to slander whosoever seems to be a threat to their existence, to their way of doing business as usual. And if our Belize people continues to support this type of mentality, what future does Belize have? Some people say Lord Ashcraft won half a Belize already. And I, I hold the Chinese man name. Mr. Hong won the other half. Yeah. Mr. Hong Mr. Mr. Hong is um So how come how come Mr. Hong and Mr. Ashcraft won Belize then? Yeah. Who they sell out Belize? The government? <laughs> Mr. Hong Which one? Uh, both of them. Uh, Mr. Hong <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wong so. is a, is an agent for China. You know, for leader of China to make sure that so. Ashcraft don't buy out Belize. And Ashcraft So what Ashcroft is an agent of the Queen. So the Queen tell him, you know what, Mr. Hong buy over Belize either. So we'll square it up. But Ashcroft is richer. Ashcroft is richer. So how do we as Belizeans still defend the status quo? I I know I don't see the sense in that. Is it for a few bucks only? Is it for the $50 that they pay you? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't understand the mentality of people defending you know what, what they openly see. Coming election day, that 150 they promise the unemployment, the unemployed reason, that's the same money they're going to use to get their votes because that's why they hold on. They're holding on on it. They're holding on. They don't want to. It's been over a month people apply for money and nobody gets nothing so, for the second. So people say that so people say that Nana fool me. Because I may think they may ask for more money if Nana may hit Belize and Nana shut away. I hear, huh? I, hear I, I heard the minister made a call made a call before the hurricane hit. Uh -huh. And again I promise, but the hurricane changed your mind the same time. <laughs> So, thank God, when, thank God for that. Thank God for that. The man that wait for a hit, he get a call, he get a call from the foreign bank. He said, look at the, the thing now hit to know he changed your mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we have we have a little bit of damage on the banana industry in the south. Yeah. Um if we if we go back a, a couple of years ago, most of the banana industry has failed. Uh, I think one of the biggest uh, banana farm was closed down, which was the 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 one by the Placencia Cota. Who owns that? I mean, that's the. Um, I think that was Mr. Zabanez farm. All right. I think most of that most of that banana production had already gone in. So so the people who have lost in the banana industries, I think, uh, you, you can correct me here if I'm wrong. I think it's more a couple of the smaller farmers who who were, who was damaged. But yet I understand that the the estimate is over twenty million dollars. Yeah, they always gonna care. They always gonna take. The <laughs> they, could, they could beg in their way, no? Yeah, we become a nation of beggars, man. We beg to, I mean, I, so can I, I, I pass a fire station the other day, and the same fire engine I see when I'm four years old. I say no. Now that is a disgrace. 
Since a man for we fire department that's an natural name have one firehouse right now. I know they laugh, are serious. They broke down the fire out, they refused for, for, for repair it for years until finally I broke it down and now BWS the bill, I think now reserve a tank then they build it now. Okay. Okay. And I know ship. You remember uh, the hurricane, the storm that just passed, right? I tracked on the storm a week. I, I tracked on the storm a week before it ever hit Belize, and I was updating people on Facebook. I don't know if you see. I saw it. I saw it. Keeping updating the people, all right. And you know what? The government not start update the people until one day before the storm came. Actually, one day before the storm came, they start updating people, and later on I find out that. The same thing I'm doing, going going on the website for um from Miami. <laughs> it's the same thing they're doing. The same but, thing. So uh, why but the minister said the minister said they fixed the radar, man. So why paying these guys sixty seven <laughs> grand a year, meteorologist guys, when they get in the data from Florida? That is useless. You understand? I I, I, watch, oh. I I watch a chief meteorologist guy talk, and he don't know shit what he's talking about. Then so someone the other day they put up a post about the amount of vehicles the BDF had after the English army had had officially left Belize, mm -hmm. okay, and turned over all the English camps to the BDF, okay. And they reflected on how much they have now. You know, I, I break that story. I don't want to add one of them was scandaling on Facebook because uh, I was a BDF guy before I went to join the United States Army, right? And BDF, before before BDF took over from the Englishman, BDF have some like 25, 30 trucks. 25, 30 trucks for less than 300 soldiers. Fast forward to 2020, BDF have less than five trucks for a thousand two hundred soldiers. <laughs> you know, you know. Boy. I am. I I talked to one of the top guy in BDF. He said, um, I asked him, so suppose a war break out, what? How you guys go mobilize the troops? He's, he's, you know, he looked at me. He said, that's stupid. This is simple. We have over eight car, de car dealers that have trucks. <laughs> we just go get. We just gonna. We just gonna sign. Come on, there, them. Yeah, we just gonna <laughs> Come on, there, them. <laughs> yeah, I owe you. And he's they're gonna take the trucks just like that. He said. He said, "Let's that's common sense. We're gonna." Do yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I, I am. Um, it's sad to say, but when the English left Belize, um, I was a member of Scouts. I've, I've been in Scouts since a young young boy in primary school, in Holy Redeemer Primary School. We had one of the best. Uh, best scouts unit i mean we were actually given medals by the honorable george Keller price as a as the best trained uh, scout group in the country and um we went down we did a trip down to punta gorda one time and a friend of mine who who worked for the forestry department um took me to see where the where the english camp was and the situation it was in then, which probably has been far worse now. I don't know if, unless they've sold it to somebody private. But these guys had their camp set up with swimming pool and everything, man. And and when yes, and when they left, and when they left, these places were just neglected, and everything went to waste. Everywhere. I mean, huh? look, I'm gonna tell you something. Sooner or later, sooner or later, sooner or later, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear. Um, these Mennonites, sooner or later, these Mennonites will say, wait, we, we want to be Let's go buy that. We want to be independent <laughs> from Belize. <laughs> look, man, I went well, let me tell you, a, a lot of the Spanish last... Look out. <sighs> Spanish look out look just like behind the United States. In the remote part of the United States, that's how Spanish look out. Look, everything written, every, the, streets are, the, the streets are to scale the houses are to scale you don't see no you don't see no piece of shit house in spanish lookout you don't see no care look you see what the government builds for these poor people in belize that this that government. is because they build that is they build some little 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 smiley plywood house 
and pray hurricane come to blow it over so they could get these people votes, man. That comes when a community works together. Okay? That is how a community works together. Which, in, if you go back to, to look at the agreements that George Price had made with the Mennonite community when they came into Belize, you can see a lot of things that, that are in, in, that, uh, in that agreement that, that really was... Nobody could have refused it. Let's put it that way. See, okay? I want to tell you something, Kurt. The Mennonites came in 1950-something. That just the other day. Just the other day. Look, look at the Garifuna people. The Garifuna people have been here almost Much over, longer. 200, over 200 years and still can't get a land. They, they, still, they still discriminate against them. Everything against them. You know? Yes. And yes. look, even the present mayor, Don Gregor, is not from... It's not a, from do, do you know that we, we are the only party with a Garifuna representative on our committee? Did you know that? Yeah, I just want to and, and and we also have a Mayan representative on our committee. Yeah, we should that's that's representative. Huh? You should have a, a, every aspect, every aspect, every um you need, you know. Yeah. Look at some of the things I told you today, Sensor Man. Which other political party has brought out these points? None. You see, I'm gonna tell you something. As I always say this, I always tell people this. I know ministers that couldn't buy a bicycle before they went in. They they couldn't buy a bicycle, and perhaps the bank the bank account was zero balance. Well, well we are accused of that, you know. We are accused that we want to get in only to make ourselves rich too. But so it, it's not it's not something that has been lost to the Belizean people, you know. Yes. The Belizean people have seen it. But look, yeah, we you everybody tried here. But like for instance, if you if you want to if you want to buy something and that store it's selling it cheaper and you stay going to Brody's and expensive you change you go to a different store just like politics now you got to change they've been kicking the Belizean people in the head for so long their head is hurting and they want something so else. so the Belizean people see it okay they know that both PUP and UDP have been and are corrupted and yet they're not willing to give uncom uncompromised people an opportunity to prove themselves. Boss, when I go apply for a job, the first thing that the boss tell me, okay, well,